right, how's it going? So we got a new, I guess, video review. I don't like that. Ugh. It's like too much of the background. All right, new idea for a new video review. So I'll review new movies, I see, and some old ones. First one is Corella. Why did I choose this one? Well, it's actually the most recent new movie I've seen. It was date night the other night. Went to Olive Garden, had a, you know, $10 soup salad with me. And went to the movies. It's our Corella on the big screen as it was intended um let's see and on that note uh going back to the movies it was pretty crowded you know it's a big theater by my house but uh yeah i would say with the social distancing every other seat was uh, blocked off by groups and there were a bunch of kids in there as it's summer the movies are back, but then they had like two trailers for like every movie. So there was the ones for the movie, the actual movie, and then there was the one that came after where it was like, do you really want to watch this new movie at your house? No, come back to the movies and watch it on the big screen. Um, you know. Uh, three movies at least out of the several trailers had the double trailer where it was a regular one and then it was the one on the small screen to say hey come back to the movies <sighs> but Corella what do we have here well it is a Disney movie it is a villain movie um, I'm not too clear on how not to spoil it, but, uh, let's just go off the initial trailer impressions, really. It was like, I heard there was gonna be a Corella movie. Not a big Disney fan. I'm completely neutral to Disney. My girlfriend's the Disney fanatic. I found it, you know, kind of stupid, but, you know, she brought me around to some of it. Some of it. Not all. I'm not a, you know, what was it? I don't pray to the Church of Disney. But I do see the value in it as fiction, like most things. So, uh, and then I saw a trailer. I forget where I saw this trailer. Maybe I looked it up once they said it was coming to uh, the streaming service, Disney Plus, for $30. Um, I was like, oh, they totally Harley Quinned it, because that's how the trailer was shot. It was shot like Suicide Squad or that Birds of Prey, which wasn't very good. Maybe I'll review it another day. Um, but yeah. Again, but... What I got was so much more. Um, you got the standard Disney dark movie plot. Okay, a tale of revenge, which does happen. Um, aside from that, you got... Uh, it's a fashion movie, which is a genre that I haven't seen too many of. It was Daniel Day-Lewis in The Phantom Thread... Meryl Streep and The Devil Wears Prada. And honestly, it's a genre I've greatly enjoyed, but, you know, it's just never too blatant. There's not a lot of movies that I'm aware of, at least. Um, you know, because sewing was one of my first hobbies, and, uh, you know, it's just an interesting kind of genre. You see people... I mean, realistically, you know, who are generally pretty cutthroat, because you gotta be if you're competing with, like, all the sweatshops in the world. Um, 
you know, to make a fashion name for yourself and sell clothes for a lot more than you have to sell clothes for. Uh, so that's how it starts. Rella's on her own. Uh, orphan, I don't think that's a spoiler. I'll put the disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen uh, any of the 101 Dalmatians recently. I don't know if they specify that part of the backstory. Really, if Corella DeVille is kind of one of those two-dimensional, like, early Disney villains who has, like, some weird thought-out lore. Uh, I think so. They're reimagining a lot of these guys. So, starts orphan, you know, ends up stealing most of the life and, like, sewing as a hobby in the meantime. Gets a job at a ritzy department store. And, you know, the male lead was a dick. And immediately I'm kind of getting those Disney red flag vibes. Like, oh, they're going to make, you know, I like all the other female characters. And, um, you know, you know the the barrel is loaded, but you don't know when they're going to shoot. Uh, one scene, though, one night after, like, you know, months and months of working under this asshole kind of fashion designer guy decides to get drunk on his private stuff and then trashes one of the window displays with some trash actually legitimate trash and makes like a dress and you know a kind of punky display we get into the decades though a bit later it takes place in the 60s but then it moves on to, uh, you know, the 70s. And I think as far as the musical timeline is, it's actually pretty good. But gets a job with this high-end fashion designer who later, you know, competes with. But starts off as a protege and then eats the fashion designer that leads her. You know, this is a story that's been told like a million times. It's not new. Um, you know... Go all the way back to M Macbeth, you know? Maybe even before that, I don't know. Something in the Bible, probably. Mm. But what stood out most, I guess, was the music, you know, to stage it. Now, they're trying to cash in on a lot here, you know? They want that, like, strong female character, but they wrote her differently. Um... And with the timing and everything, uh, depending on who you are, you start from, like, early London fashion in the 60s, like Beatles, and then you got that kind of psychedelic music and all that. Rolling Stones, um, you know, the zombies. Uh, you know, actually kind of a fresh take, you know, compared to some of the other psychedelic songs they use. It had a Credence Clearwater song, Go Through the Jungle, which was actually played fairly on, early on in the movie, so it wasn't like that, but I mean, uh, music progressively gets later and more punky as the movie goes on, because uh, that's Corella's style in this, she is essentially a punk rock person in London, uh... You know, in the late 60s, I want to say early 70s, because there's a twist. Uh, but anyway, it has these, like, absurd, like, localized displays, you know, is trashing the other fashion designer, and ultimately leading to one of the big things, uh, Stooges, yeah. But not the Stooges, they did the song, I Want to Be Your Dog which would probably be the first punk song in a Disney movie. Her friend, who she meets earlier in the movie while she's designing fashion, is a gay guy, or trans, or... They didn't specify his pronouns, but they put him in there, which is, you know, a plus, I guess. You know, because Disney doesn't typically do that, so yeah, there is a, you know... Oh, again, who am I to assume if they didn't even specify? Well, he's obviously in kind of, like, drag. Flamboyant. We'll say he's a flamboyant 
man, woman. Oh, and, uh, you know, her boss's assistant, too, but that wasn't specified either. It's just mannerisms. I'm gonna get flagged for those. Ah, well. Back to the movie. So, yeah. Um, and they introduce it right. You know, first punk song in a Disney movie. They lead up. And I didn't even believe it at first. I'm like, is that? Are they? You know, and then I immediately wanted to scream, in the fucking Stooges! In the uh, theater, you know. But that wasn't okay. still good it's still good i must have watched that dvd of like the detroit concert like you know 15 times and that's all i take away <laughs> from it because uh before he was screaming into the mic you know it's like everybody on stage but he's like he's like he's trying to get it and he's crowding he pops just some fat sweaty guy <laughs> rubbing up against him <laughs> Oh man, I miss live performances. But anyway, so uh, overall, though the movie and eh, post-credit sequence with a plot twist that uh, you know screws up Disney or screws up the lore, I guess. Eh. Also, you know they tried to tone it down with modern times. She joked about making a coat out of the dogs at one point, and then, you know, because that's her thing. But then some guy was like, yo, man, that's not cool, you know, but I don't think they really would have cared in the 60s, but they do in 2021. You know, I guess it's not cool. Don't skin dogs, you know. And then they're Dalmatians, too, which are, you know, on record to known to be inbred because, uh, you know, purebreding and all that. Oh, and then what was the other thing? Yeah, she jokes about murder. And, uh... Now, character traits. And I would usually do this part first, but... Uh, you know, given some of these obvious character traits, uh, you know, the video itself might have got shut off. Some people might have walked out of the theater, because it's kind of that cliche. So, uh, you know, the character of Cruella has dyed hair, half black, half white, and then she dyes it very early on in the movie to be red. Now, that black and white split hair wasn't like a, you know, it was a birth defect, so she didn't dye it that way. Also, Corella is, uh, you know, <laughs> it's an alter ego. Her actual name is Aurella, and she has some weird B-side that's Corella whenever she's causing mischief. You know, so... And a lot of people might have walked out for that. New name calls for a new look. And a new voice. Tina talks like this. Dina talks like this. Nice. Alright, I was just corrected. It was Estella. And then that rhymes with Corella. But Corella's the weird B side she turns into whenever it's, uh, you know, whenever it's relevant. Which, I mean, a minor cringe, I guess alter ego but she had it before any you know trauma or anything in her life so it was uh you know i guess it's justified maybe i don't know and how come she can joke about killing people but when i do it i get kicked out of the bar i mean really i'll tell you why 
It's because she didn't really drink much after that one scene in the entire movie. Oh, her arch nemesis just drinks champagne all the time, but I'm like, she does not strike me as a champagne person. It's like a, like an absinthe and blackberry liqueur kind of cocktail person. What the hell? <laughs> this is like super strong cocktail that's like a Long Island iced tea, but it's only like high proof, like old lady liquors. I'll post it some other time. But yeah. Like, high-end Long Island iced tea. I'd expect her boss to be drunk like the woman on Arrested Development. Just like out of it, you know? But no. Just evil, so. It's got a lot going on. It's hard to follow sometimes. I'm like, I feel like if they just went with one different you know, outlet, they might have, you know, they might have had an actually pretty good movie, but, you know, they go with, like, several different outlets, and it's that heist movie, it's that punk fashion movie, it's that fashion movie, it's that revenge tale movie, it's that, you know, girl trying to find herself, kind of, and stop getting walked on movie. All in one, so you know it's got its moment. So overall, I would say it was worth a watch. But I mean, again, it feels like it could have been several different movies. I guess because they want it to, you know, go to everybody. They want everybody to feel like have it be relatable. I guess a little something for everybody. So, 3.5 out of 5, or 4 out of 5. Though, if they have a sequel, it's going to have to be, like... I see problems for a sequel, because... Um, they say they might do it like Maleficent, um... Or at least Alyssa says that. She's correcting me on the name. Um... What was it? So, you know, she'll probably try to stop somebody who's going to skin the Dalmatians. And then, you know, then it's okay. Because there's an even eviler villain out there. And then, on top of that, um, what else? They have a sequel, though. It's going to probably take place sometime in the 70s. And at this point in the weird uh, universe they're building, punk rock was invented... By Corella DeVille in the 70s. Though, thinking about the movie, they're driving some old ass Cadillac DeVille, which they pronounce devil. Um, you know, and that's, it just decides that's like a good last name. Like, I would have, I would have liked to, oh, so that means like, it's like a punk name at that point, but. At that point, you probably could have gone with, like, something, you know, like, there was, like, Bobby Pin, or Leaving, or, you know, I'm trying to think of, like, an original punk name for Corella DeVille, because I know the original concept creators probably weren't thinking that. Ooh, what would it be? Amy Less, so it's spelt out like Amels, though there were no designer drugs in the show. Uh, oh man, so much stuff happened, I can't even remember half of it. Uh, aside from that, it was important to note that, uh... I am just ranting at this point, so... Definitely see it. Don't have high expectations. A lot goes on. Till next time.